mode. Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to our AutoCAD webinar for today. We're happy to have you all with us. Uh, welcome to newcomers and welcome back to those of you who have been with us before. Uh, we're going to be looking at styles today, text styles uh, in particular, but also at some dimension styles and uh, different ways we can work with those to, to be most efficient. Uh, so as uh, those who have been here before know, we're going to run a couple quick polls just to um, get an idea of, of who we have with us. We use these um, polls, this information for future webinars to hopefully make these as helpful as possible. So you can just get an idea of who is here for the first time. And it's looking like about 25% are newcomers, so welcome. And uh, we hope this will not be your only visit with us. And then just one more quick, just to get an idea of what software everybody's using. And uh, boy, split right just about even on all four categories today. So that's nice to see the variety. And I'll go ahead and close that one. So uh, I will turn the session over to Voker, and I will get started with today's session. All right. Thank you, Sean. And uh, thanks, everybody, for attending. Um, just, you know, with all the uh, different uh, split, the, the almost even split we're seeing on the different applications, kind of nice to see because even though these uh, webinars are uh, all presented on AutoCAD LT, um, they are applicable to uh, most of the verticals as well. So uh, again, thanks everybody for being here. Today, working with style. Um, but before we get started, for those who have been with us, we've got a few things to uh, just uh, take care of here. So um, I'll be as brief as possible. Feel free to leave questions in the chat window. Sean will attempt to answer those as best as he can. Um, as far as time allows, we will try and have some time at the end of the session for further discussion. This session will be recorded, and a slide, this slide deck here will be available for download from the link. Uh, I, I know we've had some problems with um, some of the links not being provided in the um, emails after the session. Uh, we hopefully have fixed that, and um, you know, sorry about any confusion and uh, aggravation for that matter. <laughs> um, but go ahead and um, check out our landing page for your future webinars. Um, this is, I, I keep telling myself I'm going to update this image. I will. Um, the schedule is being updated as well on that webinar. We are scheduled through March 26th. And that is what will be represented on that page uh, by the end of day tomorrow. Uh, like I said, we're going to have a Q&A, but if you need to have um, some additional feedback for us, feel free to email this address right down here, uh, as opposed to Sean or myself. Um, this will go to our entire team and uh, allow us to get back to you. And um, We'll do that as soon as possible. We do get pretty busy at times. Some of the pre previous sessions we've had are on that YouTube playlist uh, on the AutoCAD Exchange YouTube channel or on, on our landing page. And every once in a while, I will be referring to um, some stuff that we've done in a previous webinar, as I will today. So um, um, I'll try and point out whether or not we've done a webinar on that uh, when it comes to a particular function. All right, so having said that, one more item, and that's our Autodesk Knowledge Network. Uh, the featured articles for this week, the top five, are listed here. So these are all good ones to be aware of, as well as all the other information you can get on, at this website. Anything from downloads to tutorials to uh, troubleshooting, um, service packs for AutoCAD, AutoCAD LT, and all of our applications are available from this website. Check it out. It's got a lot of information. All right, today's agenda. We're going to talk about styles. And we will work primarily with text and dimension styles, just because um, uh, there's a lot to be covered in styles, depending on which type you work with. We'll also um, 
talk a little bit about style overrides, but uh, it all depends on how fast we get through this, too. Our main topic will be text styles. And then we're going to dabble a little bit with a dimension style, creating a new one, modifying an existing one. Uh, the bottom line is dimension styles alone, you could spend half a day or more talking about all the variables uh, that um, will affect a dimension style. Other styles available in AutoCAD are tables, multi-leaders, visual styles, detail view styles, section view styles. All of these can be tailored um, uh, and reproduced, modified, uh, whatever, to make the uh, design that you're working on look the way you want it to. And that's all styles are. They allow us to give a unique look and feel to an object. So for example, let's say we're working with um, a textile, okay? Textiles themselves are saved with a drawing. They reference a font, either a shape compiled font, which is an AutoCAD font, or a true type font. But the thing is that the fonts themselves are not saved with the drawing. Okay, so textiles, the style itself, is what we apply to that font to give it a different or unique look and feel, depending on what kind of text we want to place in the drawing. You may have annotation text that is just there for notes, uh, title block text, headers. Uh, you may have callouts. Dimensions use text uh, for the values. So you would want to create a different look and feel for those and, uh, to make them a little more unique, to make them look nice. Depend and, and depending on your discipline, you know, if you're an architect, you may want it to be a little more artistic, uh, whereas, an, you know, an engineer, um, structural engineer, just, you know, maybe you just want something very um, um, sans serif as far as the font goes. So just uh, straight to the point. In AutoCAD drawing, for the most part, uh, when it comes to text and dimension styles, um, I think table styles also, but uh, you will usually have two different type of styles that are already there. Uh, one is the standard style and one is annotative. And both of these styles are the same. It's just that uh, standard is an older style, uh, well, it's the default, basically, uh, in AutoCAD. And you have to uh, do a bit more manual work with the standard style when it comes to scaling. Annotative styles will automatically scale depending on the scale factor of the view you're in or, or the model environment that you're working with. Um, there was a little bit of work on that as well. We did talk about annotative styles and scaling in a previous webinar, so I'd encourage you to take a look at that. So again, why would we want to create new styles? Well, we want to differentiate between the type of uh, verbiage or text that we have on our in our drawings. Again, for a title block, we may want to use one style of text for notes, another type. But we also want consistency in the drawing. We want things to um, uh, conform to our organization standards, or maybe if you're an individual uh, uh, CAD tech, then uh, uh, working out of the home or whatever, you want your own consistency as well. Also, we want to use styles to retain the look of the drawing when you send it to somebody else. Um, I will actually show how that works at the end of this drawing, why, why styles are so important. But, but the bottom line is that every AutoCAD drawing has a standard style. And if you were to modify the standard style itself and, let's say, give it a nice um, uh, architectural look to that font, if somebody then inserts your drawing into theirs, and their standard style still has a uh, the default font assigned to it, their font style, text style, would override yours. And what you designed would not appear as 
as you would expect it to, at least not text-wise or maybe even dimension-wise or table style-wise. Dimension styles, just like AutoCAD, also have that standard and annotative text. Dimension styles are saved with the drawing. Um, the one important thing to note is that dimensions as a default do not are not related in any way to the AutoCAD drawing units. Okay, so basically if you were to change your drawing units from the decimal to architectural, AutoCAD's dimension styles, the default one, would remain as a decimal unit dimension style. I'll, I'll show you about all this here in the upcoming demo here. So also we want to create new styles for uh, maybe different disciplines for the consistency, uh, you know, in the company standards, uh, just to have a different look, if anything. So let's see how it works. Go ahead and uh, switch to AutoCAD LT here. And so I have here a very basic title block. And if we take a look at the text in that title block, all this text is pretty much the same. Even the company logo here, the header, is the same as the text here for the uh, title of the fields. Okay, and typically I would want to change that. Now, all this text is in a style called standard. And we can see what styles we have in the drawing by going to the annotation, annotate tab of the ribbon. That's one way to see it. And going here, we can see that we have annotative and standard, the only two styles within the drawing. I'm going to go into what is called the text style manager or text style dialog. And I just clicked on this little arrow here. Hopefully everybody can see that. And I could have typed in ST at the command line or style. Those are the command prompts for this particular um, dialog. And this is where we not only modify existing styles, but create them as well. Right here, it lists both the annotative and the standard. The annotative is always going to have this little scale next to it, whereas a regular non-annotative style does not have that. Right now, it's showing me that with the standard style, we have the font Arial assigned to it. And if we look here, we can see that there are numerous fonts available for us to use. Now, what you will see in your list of fonts on your computer is going to be different than what's on mine. If, if you were to have something like a um, uh, publisher or uh, any kind of word publishing program, uh, you are going to have different fonts based on what that program installs. You may even have a custom font package installed. Okay, so yours is going to be different. Some of these fonts have the TT next to them. All right, those are true type fonts. Then we have a font with an SHX extension, and it has a little caliper next to it. These are AutoCAD fonts, and they are installed with AutoCAD, and even by some third-party applications that run on top of AutoCAD. So I'm just going to quick, briefly go over what those fonts are. A SHX is a shape-compiled font. And basically, these go back to the early releases of AutoCAD. I mean, we still use them now, and you see them all the time. But they are all they are um, are um, fonts that were designed using segments of straight lines. Okay, and this was because of the pin plotters back in the day. Okay, they required uh, these particular type of um, vector formats to draw precisely on the on the paper, and the problem with them is that the larger you make them, 
the larger they're scaled, the more you can see the choppiness of the font itself. Okay, so there's a font called txt.shx. The letter O is actually a square, the closer uh, you zoom in on it. True type fonts are fonts which are installed by Windows and other applications, as I said. They scale crisply. Okay, the larger they are, they still have a real nice, crisp look to them on a sheet of paper. A few, several years back, several releases back with true type fonts, there were some performance issues, but those issues are no longer. So it's just as easy to use true type fonts nowadays as um, t um, shape compiled fonts. All right, so I'm just going to uh, type the letter T here, and that takes me to the first font in the letters T's, and I'm going to use this old style font. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm changing the font for standard. And see how ugly that kind of is? I'm going to click Apply and Close, and notice how it updates every font in this drawing. And that was just that change right there. Okay, those, yeah, those are on a different font right there. Nope, those are the same ones, sorry. Just need to get a little closer. And you can see as I get closer that these are just straight line segments. And there's that letter O I was talking about. In my opinion, this is, has to be the but ugliest font in the world, but um, no offense to the, anybody who does like this font. Um, and there was a reason for it. The resources of old graphic cards and uh, uh, limited amount of RAM back in the early days of AutoCAD, we needed to keep a low overhead. And this font definitely had its day. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on that for a moment, and let's take a look again in the um, style dialog. So here, of course, we can list our uh, styles. Notice that the font style is grayed out. That's because this is only available for true type fonts. Big font is available. This allows me to, um, if I'm using an Asian language character set, by selecting this, that allows me to have those character sets available. We can also make things annotative. Uh, we've talked about annotative in a previous webinar, so I am just going to stick with the um, non-annotative uh, functionality of text and dimension styles. We can also assign a height to it. Um, I would recommend staying away from this. If you do this, then that style will always have that particular height assigned to it, and you're not going to be able to change it on the fly. You'll have to go back into the style. It could also cause problems if you're using that style within, say, a dimension, which will scale according to the dim scale of the drawing. Uh, the font itself may be too large for the dimension, or you may not see it at all if you have a height assigned. So leave that at zero is a good practice. Um, some of the things we can do, we can have this text be upside down, backwards. I've not ever had a need for any of these, but I have created a style which was vertical. Okay, so that's pretty cool right there. We can also assign a width factor, make it a little wider for um, maybe a title text, uh, maybe a little narrower for uh, a dimension text. We can also assign a bleaking angle. Um, shape compiled fonts do not have um, italic, italicized text. So in the past, we would fake it out by maybe assigning a uh, obliquing angle of, of 10 degrees or something like that. And that's also useful if you're creating a dimension style, which is used for isometric text. Okay, or even just you need text for an isometric drawing, you would create a uh, font with no bleaking angle. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at creating a font right now. And we will go ahead and, yes, Sean? No, I, I was just going to say, yeah, I just wanted to chime in on the, on the height um, section you mentioned and just sort of, 
expand on that a little bit because that's a really good point you made. Um, we get people from time to time that call in and they say they can't change their text height in the properties dialog box and they can't figure out why. And uh, as Volker said, if, it, if you have set your height here in the text style, under certain circumstances it won't let you then change it in the properties and you can get stuck and not realize why. So I think it's one of those times that AutoCAD might have got a little too smart for its own good. Um, so if you're going to use that height, as Volker said, just be very careful because you may find, or, or if you have other users that use the same files and they don't understand that the height was set, uh, you know, they can really get into a bad loop where they just can't figure out why they can't change the, the text size. So just something to be really cautious of if you're going to use that field. Yeah, it's it's great if you're setting up um, f styles for a particular scale, and that's all you're ever going to use it for. But that limits you. So anyway, let's um, go ahead and create a couple of uh, three styles, actually. What I'm going to do is create a um, header style for my title here of my corporation. I'm going to create a title style for the um, um, title of the fields within the title block, and then a just a uh, um, uh, data text for the um, data that is put into those fields. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and we'll start off with the uh, uh, data. And I'm just going to make this real simple, um, <laughs> no pun intended here, but I'm going to use a simplex font. This is actually one of my favorites of the old style. Um, uh, a lot of people prefer Roman S, but I do prefer this one uh, myself. And I'm just going to apply that to it, and I'm going to leave all the defaults in this case here. Um, I don't need to change any width factor. I just want it to look normal as normal text. I'm going to click Apply. Oops. Nope, I didn't want to do that. I actually wanted to leave that under text. TXT. There we go. All right, let's click Apply. I want to create new. <laughs> Sorry, people. Awkward moment. One of Volker's famous awkward moments. All right. We're going to go ahead and call this tblock-data. Click OK. And now that it's current, it picks up the properties of the previous font. And here's where I'll use Simplex. Again, it's a nice, simple font, but it, it, it's more rounded than the uh, other uh, TXT font that I showed you previously. Now I'm going to create another new style. And this one I'll call tblock-title. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and use a true type font. I'm going to use Calibri. And as I do that, um, you'll see that font style is now available, and we have bold, bold italic, italic regular, okay? I'll use bold italic. Some fonts may only have, like, bold regular and italic. Some may have bold and regular, okay? It all depends on how much work the uh, author of that font put into the uh, font itself. Note that vertical is now grayed out as well as use big font. That's because true type fonts do not support these functions. All right, I'll go ahead and leave everything there as it is and click apply. I'll create one more new one. And this one here we will call T block dash header and click OK. And again, I'll leave it on um, on Calibri. I actually want this one to be bold italics. I'm going to go back and change the other one in a minute. I want to go ahead and change the width on this one because it's going to be for my title here, title uh, logo, I should say. I'm going to change it to a width of 1.25. Notice the change there. I'll click Apply. I'm going to go back to Title because I just want this to be bold and I'll click Apply. All right, right now, every, anytime I've made, um, created a new font, it automatically makes it the current text style, so always be aware of that. Uh, for right now, I'll leave that as it is, and I'm going to click Close.
Now, because these um, the text here is within a block, I actually need to go into the block editor and um, modify the text in there, which, you know, you want the text to be with the block. I'm going to go ahead and let me close this. I'm going to right mouse click, use quick select. We talked about this in our selections webinar. And I'm going to just, I could easily pick the limited amount of fonts here, okay, or text objects. But I'm going to go ahead and select by a height, which equals point zero six five, and click OK. Yeah, OK, I got the size right. And this is just one way we can quickly update. I've created um, my text, height, uh, text here. I'm going to go over to Style, and I want this to be my for my title fields. And I deselect that, and instead of being this style, we now have a nicer looking font here, or style. Now I'm going to go ahead and select my logo, and I'm going to change this from the standard style to the header style. And again, a lot nicer. So typically right now, I would create some attribute fields, okay? Uh, for my text within the title block. We do talk about that in one of our previous webinars. Instead, though, because we don't have time for that, I'm going to save changes, and I'm just going to add text here. And what I'm going to do is go back to the Annotate tab, and I'm going to go ahead and select T-Block Data. And at this stage, I'm going to use single line text, or D-text as it was called. You can also type text nowadays. Now note that um, on the command prompt here, it says text, specify start point. It says I can also choose a style here. Okay, so if I know the name of the style, um, I could type it in after typing S, enter, or picking on this, or I could type a question mark to list all the styles. As it is, we know that our T-block data is the um, um, text that uh, style that we want to use. So I'm going to now pick a starting point here. It tells me it's a height of 0.25 or 0.2. So I'm going to go ahead and change the height to 0.25. Can't recall what the size is supposed to be. There we go, a little big. All right. So, uh, again, <laughs> I would actually be a lot more creative about the look of the font for uh, my actual title block. The reason that, um, I'm using this style here is to just show you the difference between the shape compiled fonts and styles and the true type styles. But you can see we get a completely different look depending on the type of styles we use. Any questions at this point, Sean? Yeah, I might have lost Sean. Sorry, I was searching for the mute button. Uh, <laughs> oh, hello, can you hear me? I can, I can. Okay, okay. sorry. No, it's okay. Um, we did have just one question, uh, which uh, somebody asked when the styles were added into AutoCAD. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I was trying to look it up as we were as you were talking, and I couldn't find the exact version. But it's been around for, for quite some time now, styles in, in AutoCAD. It had to be in the earliest releases. I couldn't tell, give you an exact, yeah. uh, exact um, version or anything, but somewhere between uh, version uh, uh, 2, 2 point. Yeah, it was really early on. So the reason yeah. the question came in um, uh, from Adam, and he said the reason I asked is I manage thousands of files. The range in age, and I'm curious when it might show up on these drawings. So, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Boker, but I think the way it works is if someone is, has added these styles in, they'll just be on the file. It won't, 
it's drawing specific. So if, if somebody had created a file and they used styles, you'll see them there. If they didn't create any styles, then, then they won't be there. That's correct. Yeah. You could easily use Design Center to import styles. Okay. Uh, if you do want those in your drawing, but uh, or use the purge command to get rid of them. But yeah, un unless you've created them in the drawing, uh, then uh, they're not going to show. I'm going to just um, use the M text editor here real quick because I use single line text, but I want you to see that in the M text editor as well, we now have these styles available. Uh, you could easily just use a use a uh, pick a font. But again, I prefer to work with styles just to make sure everything remains the way I want it to look. Um, uh, but uh, that's all I wanted to show there. I am going to actually cancel out of this command right now, and we're going to take a look at dimensions and the styles for that. Again, this is going to be fairly short, brief, just because of the uh, um, amount of time we have uh, for our webinars. Just like uh, the textiles, we have annotative and standard. Okay, and I've, I've plopped some dimensions here. This is the default dimension style in AutoCAD. Okay, and I can have the, let's go ahead and, I'm just going to go ahead and type, um, I was going to type DD units, I'll use type units though, so that uh, I don't throw too many people off. Un unit, un untits. Un and it's, I need to learn how to spell here. Okay, there we go. Units, drawing units. And I can change this to an architectural format. Click OK. It's not going to change this dimension, even though everything is shown in architectural units now. Now, what if I want this to be an architectural unit? Well, I need to go into the dimension style dialog. Okay, and this is the Dimension Style Manager, you can type Dim Style or D Style. And again, Annotative and Standard. There's a lot to cover in this particular dialog here in the options available in creating a style. Let's just take a look real quick though, and I'm going to select Modify. And I can easily go to the Primary Units tab here and I'll change this to architectural, click OK, and click close. Voila, there it is. Pretty cool. But we don't want to do that because, um, you know, what if I need to uh, use a uh, decimal unit style in this drawing? Uh, so I want to create another style. I'm going to go ahead and do that in the dimension style dialog. I'll type D. And I'm going to go ahead and select new. Now everything is based on the new, uh, uh, the the standard style. Or if you have one already created, a different style, you could um, just clone that and modify it a little bit. Uh, I'll go ahead and call this Acme, just because I don't have a better name in mind. Click continue, and up pops the uh, editor here. Okay, so um, the lines tab on this. Just briefly, this is your dimension lines, extension lines, how far above the um, uh, the line work that you're dimensioning do, does the dimension begin. Uh, that's the offset from origin. Extend beyond dimension lines, how far above the arrowhead this extends. There's a lot to talk about here, so we're not going to be able to spend that much time on any of this. Um, but what we will do is we'll, we'll go ahead and make a couple of changes here, okay? Under the symbols and arrows, anything having to do with arrows and leaders, um, this is where we modify those settings. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is for my new dimension style, I'm going to select from one of the numerous types of arrows we have here. Closed field is that default. I'm going to use um, closed blank, which leaves it kind of open for the first and second here. So whatever change I make to the first, it applies to the second. Well, I want my second arrowhead to be different. And so in, instead of choosing one of these, I'm just kind of throwing this in here. We can use a user arrow. So what is this? Brings up this custom arrow block. 
Okay, basically you can create your own arrowheads to define your style. I've done this. I've created one called Vanilla. And basically, just as a note, if you want to create your own user-defined arrowhead, it has to be a block one unit in size. And the insertion point has to be on the right side. And it has to reside within the drawing. You can't bring it in from the hard drive. So in your template, and segue here, we're actually going to have a webinar next week on templates. Okay, In your template, you could save that block so that it's always available with your dimension style. So I've created that block. It's now my second arrowhead, and it's showing me right here. Under primary units, I'm going to go ahead and change this to decimal with a two pl uh, decimal placement. And under text, I'm going to go ahead and choose a different style. Now, we only have annotative and standard, so gosh, I forgot to create that style. Well, I'll click on this ellipsis, and I'll create a new style here. And we'll just call it Acme Dim. Depending on how many styles you have, you may want to you know, use different or more descriptive names. I'll go ahead and use Calibri Light. And we'll leave it on regular here. And notice this one only has two instead of four options. I'm going to make this a little narrower. I'm going to do a point 0.9 just because sometimes you need to squeeze into tight spaces. Okay. I'll go ahead and click Apply and Close and then assign it to my dimension. There are other uh, tabs here. We've got a moment, so um, I'll go ahead and point out the alternate units. Let's say you wanted to have a um, metric uh, as well as imperial units displaying on the screen. You could enable the display of alternate units. It, by default, multiplies everything by 25.4 and it gives you that metric equivalent. Okay, I'm going to uncheck that right now, though. Again, we could spend half a day on this. We're not going to. I don't have time. We don't have time. It is now the current style. And I'll go ahead and click Close. And I'll just use a quick linear dimension here. And I'll pick on the horizontal here. And repeat that for here. And oh, let's go ahead and put a radial dimension as well. I'm not going to do much more on this. I, I think you get the idea from over here. But let's, let's kind of zoom in on this here. So we have that narrower font. We have two decimal places, right? And uh, here's my vanilla ice cream cone. This is the one I spilled a couple of webinars ago, uh, but that's my custom arrowhead. Okay, and of course you could use whatever you want, but uh, it's kind of nice to have something that defines your company as far as the arrowheads go. Uh, no, no, it's it's my world isn't all about ice cream, but uh, it was a good example at the time, I thought. I'm going to save this. Remember, this is a standard style right here, right? So is the text within this dimension. So I want to show you why it's a good idea to have your own styles. I'm going to make this drawing current. This is, I've just sent the drawing to somebody's company. They have their own standards, okay, their own layers and stuff. So they typically insert drawings from their consultants into their drawing to, um, to be able to work with both their and their own co company standards. So I'll use the insert command here. I'll browse and select the um, work styles, the one I just worked on. I'll click open, and I'm going to make sure to explode this as a block. Leave it at 0, 0, and click OK. OK, so what's wrong with this picture? 
basically they've left everything at um, well the text they use a standard uh, txt.shx font they've defined their standard dimension style to have a yellow um, uh, leader lines okay and four decimal places on on the text so you know they have completely overrode any style I had assigned to my text or dimensions. This is one of the many reasons you want to define your own styles so that at, even though I inserted this into the drawing, same type of dimensions, I've used different styles, different text, it keeps that unique appearance of the work I put into it. It also makes it easier later on to modify um, uh, styles, um, select them using quick select. Uh, right now I could select all the standard dimensions and modify them to my style if I wanted to. Um, but um, yeah, that was a, I always like that example. I hope it helps. So um, that's about it. Uh, wanted to keep it a little shorter this time in case we had some questions that we could provide answers for. Uh, again, uh, textiles, there's not a much to it unless you get into annotative. Dimension styles, there's so much um, that I just wanted to kind of get into how a, a style actually affects our, our drawing. Sean. Yeah, that was great, Volker. That was um. Really good stuff. So we do have a couple questions. Okay. Uh, so the first one is, uh, are the styles their own object in the drawings database, or are they attributes of other objects within it, the drawing database? Uh, they are their own object, and um, I'm going to go into the purge command. In fact, they're, they're listed here, just like, so here we have block objects, right? Um, and if we take a look at, actually, let's go to view items I cannot purge. So here we have block objects. And if we take a look at our dimension styles, we have Acme and Standard. So these are objects, but think of them as an overcoat for yourself, OK? You want to look a little different, so you throw on you know, nice long leather overcoat. Or you want to be casual, you put on a jeans jacket. You're just differentiating how you look that day. And in this case, we're just adding a little bit of flair to another object, disguising it. Hopefully that answers that. Yeah, very good. Uh, let me see. So the question is, say the background has a hatched pattern where the radius dimension is. How do you create a window so the measurement shows? By going into the style command, under text, where is it? Draw frame around text. And that way the hatch, OK, so I've, I've gone ahead and done this to the standard style. So right now, if you were to hatch around this within this object, So in this case, it's going over a little bit. Ah, yeah, it's going to the extents of the um, of the text itself. So, but you can change that in the dimension style what the offset is, and that would be the right. dim gap. So yeah, so we can maybe get into that in a future yeah. webinar. But I, I think that's good enough to show where that option is and. And that it can be done. Yeah, and 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 you know, in the last webinar, we did a bit of um, adding a on properties for lay uh, working with layers. You know, yeah. I could actually add a transparency property to the layer itself, it, to the hatch layer. Yep. Okay, I'm going to move on just because the questions are are starting to pour in, which is great. By the way, we do have questions, but. Let me move on just so we can try and get to them all. So uh, how can we turn off the dimension override? Every time I open my drawing, 
the dimension override is always added into my current dimension style and becomes current. Let's make a change here. Let's go ahead and change that to green. I'm trying to just create an override yeah. on this here right now. Um, well, we yeah, I know this one. This one takes a little bit of setup, so it's a bit it's a bit trickier. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do a Control S. If that updated the database. Of course, when you want one of here, right? Um, so let's go override. Oh, there we go. We could have done that. Uh, let's go line type. Do that. Okay. So here we've got that override. Is so I I'm assuming that's what they're referring to. Um, one way. God, there's so many different ways you could probably do this. It depends what the yeah. override is actually being used for. I mean, if if you've done a temporary override on a particular dimension style, there's your neighbor, Sean. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, if you have a temporary override uh, assigned to just one dimension, you would have to change that dimension um, this override either as a uh, save it to a new style or modify it to override the um, existing uh, to uh, conform, have it conform back to the uh, existing style. I'm trying to think of a better way to explain this. That one really caught me off guard. Here, <laughs> but here's the, That's the goal. That's the goal every week. <laughs> but, but here is an option when you're right-clicking, and that's this remove style overrides. So um, good one right there. Not yeah, good. and I think you're right. That it's a subject that we could probably spend 20 or 30 minutes on, honestly, going over all the different options. So uh, I think that's a good quick overview. Uh, what I would say, um, Urbano um, asked that question. If you go into the help command and, and go to style overrides, there's quite a bit more information on it. And I apologize for the dog in the background. Somebody has a dog in the office today, so I apologize for that. Uh, <laughs> Sean's not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next question is, is there a way to create my own baseline dimension style? I would like to use the baseline command, but only have the text and a single arrowhead show. Yeah, and that's actually where you would create an override. Um, let's see. So I'm going into the uh, and, and actually a quick way to do it is to create to to modify that uh, um, style um, using the properties palette. Okay, that baseline that you have, and so here we have this baseline dimension. And you could then save it as a new style. Okay, that's one way to do it. Okay, so save this style as a baseline. You just have to be sure to use the baseline command every time um, for that particular one. But um, let me think. Oh, yeah, I was going. So now we've created that style override right here. There's that baseline one. But you can take your standard style, you can go into new, used for, in this case, we'd want to use linear. So, it, I mean, any linear dimension. And it doesn't break it up into baseline or, or uh, linear vertical or angular, or, you know, whatever. But here you could create that style and say, look, on this one here, I want dots. Okay. So we click closed, closed, and now we've modified an override for that style of those closed dots. Um, now, one way, I guess, to make use of this, here I created this one for a baseline, this top one. Now I would probably grab a palette. Oops, that's the wrong one, control three. I'd probably create a, uh, 
new palette, trash, and I would drag this onto that palette, and for properties, fly out options, use fly out. There we go, flat options. I would go ahead and unselect this stuff here. Can I right, let's see. Yeah, it's not going to let me right click. Diameter, there's my baseline. Okay, so click, click, unselect, unselect, okay. Call it baseline, custom. I'll, I'll leave out a description. Click OK. And now, note the command prompt. It says baseline. Select base dimension. And doink. Oh, I must not have assigned my, I used, um, yeah, I used my dimension style. Sorry. I think you get the drift. Had I used yeah, standard, yeah. created a, created a, uh, the modifications, drug it to the um, palette, and I, I think that definitely gave a good overview of, of how you would do it. Yeah, so there are probably other ways to do it. Okay, right off the top of my head, that was the way I came up with it. So Perfect. Okay, is there a way to convert SHX to a true type font within a drawing? No. Yeah. You would have to create um, um, have some kind of a font creation program. Um, uh, where you could modify, you know, create your own true type fonts. Um, there are proxy fonts in in Windows uh, that are um, true type variations of the um, SHX font. Okay, so you, you may want to look into the Windows font folder and see what you have there. Um, you could, I know, you could use like Simplex or something like that in a Word document if you wanted to annoy somebody. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Moving on. Are there any differences between the text style and the text tab in the dimension style window in the dim style command? Okay. So, are there any differences here? This dialog right here is the same exact dialog. In the past, we never had access to this. If we got to this text, I want to sign a different style, and I realized, oh, no, I only have the standard. And, okay, I'd have to finish up my style here, click OK to create it. Then I'd go back into the text dialog, create my dimension text style, come back in here and assign it to the dimension. Okay, so I, I forget, 2004, 2005 release of AutoCAD, they added this toggle to just open up that dialog, which just makes all kinds of sense. So, no difference. Yep. Okay, and um, just going back to the question about um, true types or, or SHX fonts, the follow-up was that uh, the user gets a lot of files that use SHX, but he doesn't have the SHX files. So. Uh, what I have found is that most users slash companies are very open to sharing their fonts. Uh, for the most part, everybody wants their files to look the way they have designed them, and so they would want you to have that. Usually what happens when you don't get the fonts with your file is the user simply forgot to attach them or didn't think to attach them. If you go back and say to them, I got your file, but I'm missing these fonts, they'll usually send them over to you, and you can put them into your font folder, and then AutoCAD will find them. Uh, that's usually the best way, because even if you can convert those fonts to something else or use a different font, it's it's now not going to look the way the originator of that file planned it to. Yeah. Uh, so always best to try and get those original fonts. And what we've found is that it, unless it's an old file and we and you have no idea where the file even came from, in that case, it's hard to to get that font. Although usually. Uh, you know, Google search or something like that, you can find it that way too. But in most instances, if you just go back to whoever sent you the files and ask for the fonts as well, they'll send them right over. And that's usually the best solution. Okay, so I want to add on to that, and this is just um, kind of a legal note. Um, most shape-compiled fonts are 
basically open source. Okay, you can find all kinds of them freeware wise on the internet in the Autodesk discussion group, um, the, or Autodesk community, I should say. And um, uh, a lot of them are just fonts that CAD users have created on their own over the years and made freely available. Some are purchased, okay? And so you have to be careful because maybe they do have a copyright. It's rare with Shape Compile, but I know there are plenty of companies out there at one time that were selling packages of um, these fonts, and so you had copyright on them. True type fonts, same thing. Unless you go to a freeware site, uh, a site for freeware fonts, and a lot of them have cop uh, similar fonts to win uh, copyrighted fonts. Uh, but unless you go there, um, uh, Windows or any true type fonts are, are typically copyrighted. And uh, so if you send something from a Corel Draw package, a font from a Corel Draw package with your drawing to your uh, customer, client, whatever, that's illegal. Um, I'm just letting you guys know, okay? Be careful about that. I will say that um, the Windows fonts, it's best to stick, there are like 15 fonts that are installed on all Windows systems worldwide. And some of the, I don't know all of them, some are, you know, you have Arial, you have uh, Times New Roman, uh, you have um, Verdana, Tahoma, uh, Calibri. Uh, those are all good to use, and you're not going to have to worry about sending those fonts. Um, just, all I'm saying is, don't get yourself in trouble, okay? Um, be careful about what you send as far as custom fonts. Okay, I'm off the bandwagon. So, <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it is, it's definitely good, you know, like you say, Volker, no matter what you're working on, it's a good idea to make sure legally you're covered. Um, I haven't, I haven't heard of too many issues where people I haven't heard. Yeah. I haven't heard of fonts. any. Okay, <laughs> yeah, but typically you, with fonts, you're yeah. good to go. But do you and really want to be the first? <laughs> well, if you're asking somebody for the font and they send it to you, that would typically be a good sign that they're they're okay with you using it. If if they didn't want you to use it, I'm sure they'd come back and say, no, we're not willing to share that. Yeah. So that's probably there too. Um, I know we're down to about three minutes left, so there are some other questions. Um, at this point, what I would ask is if you have questions we didn't get to, or we're, um, I'm very sorry about that. What I would say is post those to the feedback link, and we will we will do our best to answer them there. Um, in relation with that, Volker, there was a question earlier or a comment actually that the links that went out earlier for the um, you know the feedback link and the different pages that we share uh, were evidently at least for one user reported that they went to the German site. Oh. So, um, uh, you know, that's something that if you if you got the links and they were for the German site, we will take a look at that and resend them out if uh, if we need to. So yeah, I could have. Uh, please post those questions there. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead. Like I said at the beginning, I know we had some issues. Uh, I thought we had them all worked out. So um, I will double check those links again. But I thought I just checked them yesterday. Before we do our closing poll, Sean. I just want to yes. go over some of the additional resources. So I've, I've tried to include as much as I can about, uh, well, not as much. There's Buku information out there. But um, here's some good information uh, in this PowerPoint, some links to more about styles. Um, one of our colleagues emailed um, a post that was on the Knowledge uh, Network uh, shortly before the webinar. So I quickly threw that in this AutoCAD shortcuts guide. So it shows all the different default shortcuts. If you don't want to go into the PGP to see what those are. Some upcoming webinars. Uh, next week, creating and using templates. Uh, copy commands is what duplicating objects is all about. Working with the Content Explorer. This is similar to Design Center, just a modernized version, uh, a very uh, powerful tool, both uh, network-wise as well as uh, local installation. And then we'll talk about working with table styles. So. Uh, those are, there'll be more, but uh, those are the next four. So um, we had questions already. Uh, Sean, if we could run that poll before we quit. Absolutely. And uh, so just looking to see uh, your thoughts on today's session. And 
this feedback is very valuable to us. We appreciate you taking a moment to to send that in. And uh, you also may have noticed while we're running this poll that um, with the webinars, what we're trying to do is alternate each week with with a, something from the back to basics session and then a beyond the basics. So we're trying to alternate and go back and forth with that to give you guys some some good tips on some of the the more uh, what we consider the basic features in AutoCAD and then also you know going a bit beyond that too so hopefully you find that helpful so I'll go ahead and close that poll Volker thank you everyone for sending in your thoughts yep. and uh, I think, think that's about I think it that wraps us up for today so thank you everyone for joining we're glad you attended and uh, hope to see you next week thanks everybody have a great day